Look, Mac, does the Amajack, Gunslinger, Evacuation, Suicidal. I let it pick a random map. I was going to do any map we picked. Uh, that, that it picked. And it picked Evacuation Point. So that's why we're doing Evacuation Point again so soon. Um, I didn't have any control over it. I left it up to, you know, Jesus take the wheel. Jesus took the wheel and he drove us to the Evacuation Point. My nose itches. Do you have a hair or something? You can never tell if it's cat hair or my hair. Either way, it's really, really like, itchy and scratchy. Hey! Um. So I played D&D this past weekend on uh, on Sunday. We ran a one-shot. We only had three out of the five uh, party members available for play. Okay, like, yeah, whatever. We just we just die here, I guess? No? I only had three out of the five players available for the uh, the session on Sunday. Whereas we had everybody available on uh, Halloween, which is like 6 a.m. for me, which means I have to get up at like 4 a.m. on Halloween. <laughs> which is fine, you know? But, um... So, uh... You know, whatever. Still got the odds, dude. Still got the odds. Uh, anyway, so we got some. Um, we had one shots. I had pre-built characters for them, and some of them made their own characters. But it was, a, it was a level three campaign. They started in a tavern. I ended up kind of loosely basing it off of a one shot that I played through before. Because um, with my old D and D group, we ended up having a uh, a one shot one day just because. RDM wanted to uh, to run a one shot because we had we were missing a player I think or um, you just you, we just wanted to run a one shot or something like that um, we just we just wanted to mess around a little bit have uh, have a break and, and enjoy the one shot I think some we died or something like that we had to make new characters and we were like well let's run a one shot for a little bit and then uh, for like one session you know it's in the name one shot. Um, and then uh, we'll uh, get back into the main campaign. I forget what the reasoning was, but it was uh, something. We ended up running one shot. And the way that it went was uh, we were hired to help out this um, town that was in trouble. Uh, we, we approached and... Uh, it was it was fairly not super loosely based off of it, but but kind of based off of it. Kind of kind of they you you would definitely be able to recognize it. It wasn't a a total transformation, but definitely a different battle altogether. Um, so we ended up uh, getting to this town. There's this horrible stench and uh, like rotting stuff everywhere, which was also prevalent in in my campaign. Um, and then, uh, We've got a not anymore, we don't. Um, so we go up the mountain, and uh, it, like, the stench gets really bad. We have these potions that make it all look like, like candy and, and jelly beans and ice cream and stuff, which also prevalent, also present in my campaign. Like I said, it was, it was pretty tightly based off of it. Um, we finally get up to it, and it's it's. Uh, he makes my uh, my DM made the uh, the enemies kind of uh, like chimeras almost, like this this amalgam of uh, of uh, of different um, things. You know, like an amalgam of 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 body parts just kind of melded together as it's just this this rotting, uh, disgusting, decrepit like hellhole um i differed on that because i didn't want it to be like i wanted it to, to fit it's uh, it's taking place in the main campaign and i wanted it to be a little bit more realistic like in the main campaign kind of following in line with that so i made it a, i made the plot more about like demons and stuff with with rotting flesh and, and sacrifices and and uh brav really my god um so we didn't have those 
like chimera things. Uh, we ended up in in the campaign that I played. We ended up getting to the uh, the top of the mountain, and the boss fight was this like large chicken, and he, he brought out like a chocolate chicken for the for the fight for the character, which was which was pretty cool. Um, and then uh, we fought the chicken, and it was like flooding our senses with smells, and like it smelled terrible, and we had to like do all this kind of stuff with it, and it was like a cool campaign, right? Um, but I, I ended up differing because what I did instead was uh, same kind of plot line, same kind of idea. Um, they were brought to a town to come save it at the base of a mountain. And uh, they were given these potions that made it smell better and make it look like candy and lollipops and all this kind of stuff. I was a little disappointed because nobody tried to eat it. I definitely wanted them to, but they didn't. So, kind of disappointing in that. Um, but, you know, whatever. Um, they had fun with it, right? Like, that's that's what matters. I would have liked it more if they did, but, like, it's not about what I want. It's about what they want, ultimately, so. Um, anyway, so so they were brought to this this place. They had the uh, the potions. Everything was smelling nice, and but everything was kind of rotting and, and gross and, and, and falling apart and bones sticking out and all this kind of nastiness, right? Uh, they ended up fighting the boss of the area. I'll be honest with you. Um... My party was a better group. <laughs> uh, we, had, we had better group cohesion between us for, for, for handling like boss fights and stuff like that. Like we were just better gamers, I guess. So the difficulty of the fight was that that, uh, that my party got was, was definitely like leagues harder than, uh, than what they got. But at the same time, it's not about how good you are, because as the DM, I just have to make sure that it's it's balanced to how good they are, right? Like, it, it, I don't have to challenge them so much. I don't have to work on improving their their skill as a D&D player, because it's not about that, you know? It's like it's it's kind of a D&D is kind of an interesting game, and in that how good you are at it just doesn't matter. You can't be bad. It's just that uh, the group that I played with, we were definitely um, when it when it came to combat or, or just in general being kind of in line with with each other's plans and, and like metas and stuff for for combat and stuff like we were definitely better so my my dm had to make things harder so that we would still feel challenged whereas uh my group is is, is worse at the combat for sure uh so i have to make things easier you know like that's that's the beauty of DD to me is that it's, it's balanced around the party rather than having to balance your party around the game and you don't you don't have to improve yourself as as at combat you you want to right because you, you always want to improve as a as a person you always strive for improvement but it's not necessary as you get better the game gets harder and that's that's one of the things that i really love but anyway so um the fight that i gave them was definitely like significantly easier than what we had like uh the fight that i gave them is is pretty much like the trash mobs <laughs> that we were given honestly um for uh for our fight it's just i i, I find it so funny how um Either this is a giant how differently i have to handle things because i give them fights that i expect to be like what would happen well you know we'll, we'll continue talking about the uh the one shot so i gave them this fight it was like all about the the demons that were uh infesting the mountain and uh like leaving rotting bodies and stuff everywhere as they uh, consumed them and, and stuff, right? For for energy, um, they ended up fighting the boss, which was a, uh, a spined devil with a couple of modifications, but but pretty pretty much spot on. To uh, I, I I typically raise the AC of uh, of monsters a little bit, and then I'll oftentimes raise the uh, the saves for them as well, just to kind of make things a a little bit more balanced on the uh, on the fly. As they go, like, like basically what happens is I'll, I'll throw them in, right? Like, I'll take the monster, I'll throw them into the fight, and then, like, they take the first hit, and I'm like, Wow! That that hurt a lot. Okay, we'll just kind of, like, up the AC a little bit. And, uh, or, or up their health or, or something like that, you know? Just to, on the fly, balance it, make it a bit of a, a harder fight, you know? Like, immediately. Like, you can tell how the fight's gonna go, like, immediately, and you're just like, yeah, this has to be harder. 
and then you just uh, add a little bit of damage in, add a little bit of HP, AC, saves, you know, whatever you want. You can't add too much in because then they're like, hey, a 17 hit before, and now 17 doesn't hit, but you can be like, they hit a 17, you know, for the, the attack roll. The AC was 12. And you're like, you know what? Actually, we're just going to make that AC like 15 now. Nobody will notice. Nobody nobody knows the difference. The fight's still fine. And it was, moder it was a, it's a moderately challenging fight, right? That's what I wanted. That's what I'm saying. Is that That's the beauty of D&D is that uh, this kind of stuff can happen as you just kind of on the fly. Make sure that your players are, are feeling challenged and uh, like they had to actually think about it and, and come up with a solution themselves because that's, that's what makes it fun in my opinion. Uh, anyway, so they uh, ended up fighting the Spined Devil, which was like the boss of the place. And then they uh, they find this orb of energy. And they, they, they like, attack it. And then book it. And as they, uh, they run out, it like blows the mountain sky high. And leaves this giant crater in the place of it. Littering boulders across the landscape, you know? Beautiful stuff. Um, and... Uh, Okay, this is going to be challenging right here. Beautiful stuff, right? Don't like anything that's happening here, to be honest with you. Brav. Yeah? So, uh, anyway, so they, um, end up, like, destroying the energy ball and saving the town, and everybody's happy and stuff, and it was, uh, it was a good time, right? Like, uh, had that little one-shot. Took about three and a half hours to, to play... Uh, from start to finish. I didn't really have a plan going in, just kind of as we went, kind of decided how it kind of felt like it was going and, and kind of picked up stuff. A lot of inspiration from, from some other places for sure, as I've explained, but, um, you know. We stand on the shoulders of giants, as it were. It was, it was definitely a unique one-shot, but uh, recognizable where the inspiration came from anyway. But, you know, everybody had fun with it. It was, a, it was a good time. They ended up killing the Spine Devil, getting down, getting the reward, talking to the people. Um, didn't find out all the secrets that there were to find out in the, uh, in the area. But, um, you know, it's all good. So, they'll, uh, they'll come back eventually and, uh, and see what's happened. See see the consequence of their actions, so to speak, and it'll be, it'll be fun. It'll be a fun time. Um, yeah. But anyway, so one thing that I do often, as I, uh, as, as we play, because I'll, I'll adjust things on the fly, um, and I was talking about how, uh, how this group that I, I DM for is definitely not as, uh, as competent in in combat anyway um they definitely think things through and like follow the story better than my group did so like everybody has their own strengths and weaknesses right like our strengths was definitely dominating in combat and their strengths are definitely not dominating in combat um uh, neither group is better i'm just it's uh the differences in, in personalities and stuff right um but anyway i'll, I'll kind of make things and i'll look at it and i'll be like yeah that looks like a reasonably challenging fight you know like or a reasonably challenging like adventure like you have the the minions you got the you know the second from the top minions you know if you have the the junk minions you walk in you're like haha we can just steamroll all of these guys you know like goblins and kobolds and stuff uh, and then typically you'll find the uh the slightly harder dudes as you get a little bit deeper in, you know, these are the people, like, uh, that have a little bit more say in whatever organization they're a part of, you know? People with a little more power, a little bit more, you know, a little bit more, uh, oomph behind their words, a little bit more strength and, and, and uh, all that kind of stuff, right? And then, uh, you'll have the big bad evil genius at the end of it as well. Um, and, uh... It's, it's always good fun, because I'll plan it out for, like, not for my party, but like I, I look at it, and I think from my perspective that this seems like a, a fairly well-balanced thing. And then as I'm going through it, they're, like, fighting the, the minions or whatever, and they're having trouble with it, and I'm like, 
oh, we got to change this, like, now. <laughs> so I oftentimes, like, get rid of the big bad that I made. Um, or get rid of the, like, the lieutenants and stuff, you know what I mean? Like, I'll get rid of, like, one of the steps and then, like, nerf stuff a little bit at times. Like, just after they, like, start out in a couple of the first fights, I'm just like, oh, wow, they got, like, real messed up from that. Because I try to kill them. Right? Like, I, well, I don't know. I don't really try to. I try to keep them alive, honestly. I'm not afraid to kill them, though, right? Like, like when I'm when I'm playing as a, as a goblin or as a, as a beholder or or, a, or whatever, you know? Like, I will... Yeah, like my my party got like a mind flare at like level six, and we had to we had to fight it. Like that was not even the big bad evil genius at the time. You know what I mean? Like that was just a normal dude. You know, like we were we were pretty potent in in combat. We we definitely knew what we were doing. We we understood how to fight and stuff. My group, they're level six. If I threw a mind flare at them, I think they'd die. I'm I'm fairly confident that uh, there would be at least one death if I threw a mind flare at them. <laughs> And it wasn't even like the big bad, you know. We were we were off to fight like a beholder. Is is the is the big bad at the time? Um. Anyway, it's not. Uh, we also like didn't follow any story plots, and they follow most of them. Typically, kind of. They eventually come back anyway. We never did. <laughs> so, you know, everybody has their own strengths and weaknesses. Is is the moral of the story? But uh, yeah, oftentimes I put together a, an adventure or something for them, and then they go into it and. They're having trouble immediately, and I'm just like, oh god, you've used, like, all of your potions, and it's just the first fight? Like, I, this was supposed to be just, like, steamroll territory. You guys were supposed to just, like, you know? I, th I think the, I think the issue, really, like, one of the big issues is they value their, um, their spells and stuff too greatly. They have, like, too good to use syndrome, right? So, whenever, whenever they see, like, a big group of, of, uh, of goblins or something like that their first reaction isn't always sometimes it is you know sometimes you're like oh fireball you know but their first group usually isn't use their big spells to take out the big group of goblins so they get into it take a bunch of chip damage use up some potions and uh end up having to go fight the the big boss with no resources but you know spells like i don't know i'd rather have the rather have the uh the resources and then just take a long rest personally but Um, I think the reason, I think that's kind of the problem with them is, is they, uh, they value their spells too highly. But, you know, that, that's, that's my job as the DM to, to keep things balanced to their, uh, to their abilities, right? It's just, uh, yeah, I always, I always balance it kind of around me and then have to rebalance it on the fly. Anyway, I don't want to, like, knock them down too much, you know? Because, again, it's not like they're playing it worse than me. Like, I'm not saying that they're a worse D&D &D player than me. I'm just saying that uh, in in combat, you know, if, if you put us, if you put, you know, their group and my group into, you know, like uh, an arena match, you know, 3v3 kind of thing. I mean, they have five, we had three. Um, so, you know, they, they'd probably end up winning 3v5. But, you know, 3v3. Um... We'd probably win, like, almost every single time. Just just because we... I don't know. We make stronger characters, I guess. I don't know. We also, like, played it for a lot longer than they've played it. You know, we played uh, every other week. Almost every week sometimes for, for a while, even. Uh, for two and a half years, almost. Like, like, we, like I played hundreds of sessions of D&D and they were like four or five hours each like I played four or five hundred six hundred hours of D&D you know as a player so we definitely had a, an awful lot of experience for us to to learn how to be good at the game and learn how to uh to not die and stuff um and also a, a part of it is just that my uh my DM would would also do the same things that I do and kind of balance it to our uh to our capabilities, right? Again, that's the beauty. If you guys haven't played D&D, &D, then you're probably like, wow, you're being such a uh, an arrogant jerk here, just talking about how much better you are. Like, that's not the point, you know? Like, combat isn't all that there is in D&D, &D, you know? Like, we go sessions at a time without having any combat at all, just because just there's 
so much role play and and and, and you know you guys are able to like you can get through almost anything without having to fight right if you if you just talk it out people will generally be responsive to that and uh yeah it's always fun too and and uh, you definitely we were we were better at the fighting aspects than the talking aspects um talking my group was was not we always had like high charisma characters we were not necessarily good at talking though we were good at convincing people that we should have killed the people we killed you know when we were accosted what do you expect you expect me to be accosted and not retaliate <laughs> you know not really uh not really talkers so much um my group wasn't we were we were you know punch first talk later kind of group I'm not saying we were murder hobos we definitely we we tried to talk things out sometimes occasionally once or twice I think we ended up trying to kill him at that point too you know what is actually funny is um we did end up having it was like a year and a half into our group into this campaign when we finally he was like, all right, I need everybody to roll initiative. And it was our first time after like a year and a half of playing together that we didn't attack. You know, because like sometimes you get you have to roll initiative and uh, it's just so that you have the order of uh, you have that uh, that action economy. You know what I mean? Like not everybody's doing everything at once. You just you have the action economy. People can talk on their turn. It's like the, the talking stick, you know, it's not always about combat. Sometimes you want to have turns with with talking and being able to say things so that uh, people can't interrupt each other and and uh, you know all that kind of stuff and if you want to start doing actions like summoning things whatever that's also in the action economy like you're it's, it's like you know you're 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 one step away from from this person just flipping their 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 uh, their, their their credit gen and, and and going ballistic you know um, so you, you roll initiative and it was like a year and a half into the campaign we finally use uh, our DM was like roll initiative we all got initiatives and then uh, I forget who went first but but that person was like just like hey what's up <laughs> you know we, we just started talking to him and uh, our DM was like I have nothing prepared for if you guys don't kill this person <laughs> Because he didn't expect us to not just immediately go ballistic on them and just like immediately try and kill them. He was like, I had nothing. <laughs> I had no idea you guys wouldn't try to kill somebody immediately. It's like a year and a half in the first time we had any kind of... Uh, any any kind of... Like, uh, it was like... You know, this is the kind of group where uh, you meet somebody... And then you're like, I don't like the way you're looking at me. And you try and stab them in the face, and then you almost get TPK'd because you should not have tried to stab that person in the face. And then you leave, and you're like, ah, oh, man. We should go back and stab that person in the face. And you're like, heck yeah, dude, let's do it. Like, he, he got lucky. <laughs> it's like, you know, I talk about my Chinese web novels and, and how, uh, I think I've talked about it before. I, I, I was just always dumb. Like, uh, the main character will mess up, like, somebody, and then... Somebody else comes along and is like, oh, well, you just got lucky. You're not actually strong. You just you just got lucky. That's literally, literally how we were in D&D. So we weren't defeated, okay? They just got lucky. It's like plus 18 to hit, plus like 70,000 to damage. And we're like, yeah, well, you know what? I have a 19 AC, so uh, add in a little bit of shield. And I'm just saying, if you didn't get lucky, you wouldn't have hit me. It's like four or five minimum or, or that you need to to hit well you got lucky dude why so lucky but uh, yeah my uh, my group definitely tries to talk to people more it doesn't always work because sometimes the people you're talking to don't want to talk you know <laughs> like sometimes Combat is the only option because sometimes you're talking to the murder hobo. Okay, sometimes the NPC is the murder hobo. Ooh, hold up! I just thought of a good. Oh, they're in like a whole, 
Uh, it's going to be like a long time. Not even like a long time. But it's going to be a while before they're out of their current predicament in the uh, in the campaign. Because they're in like Watercrest right now. And uh, going through all of this uh, trials and, and stuff. I'll have to think of a way to speed it up. Because I got a good idea for for a new thing. I just, I want I want a murder hobo. I want a murder hobo NPC. Just goes around murdering everybody they see. Probably base it off of one of their characters or something. Because <laughs> they they got a little bit of murder hobo in them for sure. One of them saw a I had a a little ride little little red riding hood event planned out once. So there was just this girl with a with a, a red hood on walking towards them in the forest. You know, some, you know, some sniffles in the distance, and uh, what was what was their what was one of their first reaction? Eldritch blast to the face, blew the little girl to smithereens. Poor little girl, dude. Murder hobos AF. <laughs> that that definitely caused some some internal conflict in the party, as uh, at least one of the characters was was not into murdering little girls. And one of the characters was like, yeah, but what if she wasn't a little girl? <laughs> just just literally like, it could have not been a little girl. <laughs> so I killed her. Turns out it was, but you know, what if it wasn't? Are we going to lose? We may. We will. Not. We will not. Hey. Okay. Um, but yeah, that was definitely one of the, uh, the funnier events that I've, I've planned out for them. It was just the little Red Riding Hood thing where they just blast her in the face immediately. And I'm like, bruh, it was little Red Riding Hood. You could have gotten, like, stuff out of it. You were definitely going to get into a trap later on, but, like, you know. I mean, it's just little Red Riding Hood, dude. So anyway, I turned that into a whole thing that they ended up getting haunted for a while. By a, uh... Night Hag. That was good fun. Anyway, that's gonna do it for today. Thank you for watching. Remember to like the video if you like it. Subscribe to see more in the future comedy if you have anything to say. And I'll see you next time. bye de bye bye de bye bye de bye It's like so long, gay Bowser, but, uh, bye bye